Wait, was that a slip? Wait, did Jeffrey just make a mouse? Oh my gosh, Jeffrey just made a mouse slip. It was? Oh, he admitted it on stream. It was a total slip. Okay. They didn't have me up. They assumed it would be a draw. <laughs> okay, they assumed it would be a draw. That's pretty funny. Okay, I get fair trust. Let's go knight f3. Um, let me minimize this. I guess. Minimize this. Okay, there we go. Okay, we get knight f3, knight f6. Okay, let's play b3. Keep it simple. Okay, second cam is on. There we go. Good. Okay, so he plays a5. Okay. <laughs> so we're already off to a very fun start. Um, I'm going to play a3 here. Okay, we hear you. Look at this. Hikaru. Spicy. E3, a5. Open the Tabasco sauce. Okay, a3. Close the Tabasco sauce. A4, B4 is the idea. It's a it's a principled principled move a five against b three. I know it, it's obviously not the immediate thing you think of when you're learning chess. Control the center, develop your pieces, but b three a five is a is not not a bad response. Thematically, you prepare a four. You also can expand eventually space with b five. So anyway, interesting stuff. Yeah, this is not as outlandish as I think yeah. people might think it is because you're you're exploiting the hook on on b three, and this is already transposing to more conventional waters is Dimitri adopting a King's Indian setup. The question will be wh whether he puts his pawn on D6 or D5, but there's a gazillion possible setups here. I mean, I don't really want to be standard, but you know what? I'm just going to be standard. There's just no need to be silly here. Just play chess. But I think because he's played A5, I'm actually going to go G3, I think, next move. If he hadn't played A5, I, don't, I think I would just stick to the regular routines, but because he's played A5... I think that this is a little bit shaky. This pawn doesn't belong on a5 here. Yeah, this is one of the reasons, I mean, first of all, that Ikaro likes these setups Yep. and that he's so good at them. That it's the, it's like a jellyfish, you know? It, you just, it has no shape. You can push any of your pawns to any square. And for that reason, it's very hard for black to find a counter setup. Is whatever setup black plays, the car will play something that exploits its drawback. And here we, here we go, right? He's got E3, immediately exploiting the weakness of the B5 pawn. Nothing but insane, a, it's but it's good. It's a crazy one, right? He's, he's, in a, uh, he's in a fun mood by playing B5. Okay, he goes Bishop A6, which I also don't really understand. I mean, play. I guess I just develop. Why not? Yeah, this is a very strange. This is going to be a very strange game, without a doubt. Without a doubt, this is going to be a strange game. I mean, B4 was also even a move there. It's just very bizarre. I mean, B4 is even a move here. It's so bizarre. Um, I'm going to do it. I, I don't even know if this is right, but it looks too, too weird to not do it. It looks really, really weird to play like this. Uh, but I, again, I don't really know, and I kind of want to have some fun. I mean, we'll see. I might even actually, you know what I just realized? I might not even Fion Keto the Bishop. I might just go Bishop D3 because computers a lot of times nowadays, they'll say you push G3 and then you just don't, you just don't Fion Keto the Bishop. Maybe I'll just go here to keep pressure on the pawn. I mean, this is just going to be a very, very weird game though. And any way, any way I look at this is going to be weird. <laughs> I actually had a feeling he was going to do C5 just to make it even weirder. Um... This is insane. This is insanely weird. Um, I don't even know what to do here. I'm playing knight b3. Okay, if I grab the pawn, he goes knight bd7, c6, knight c5, bishop e2. I mean, it's just so weird. Why is Andraken just sneaky so damn good? He just, he's always there. Just he's always good. there. He he's is like, hey, always there. Hey, I'm here just being really good at chess all the time. Look at me. It's the universality of a style. The fact that he can do this is a good representation of what makes him so dangerous. He can yeah. play, he's like a shapeshifter. You know, he can play what literally openings on either end of the spectrum. You can see him in a sharp night or, and then the next game he plays like the most solid London system of all yeah. time. 
There are not a lot of players like it, even at the top. Hikaru is like that, of course, which yep. is also what makes him so hard to play. Okay, so he plays B4, which I expected. So, of course, I trade. Takes. I mean, I assume I just castle, or do I go? I think I just castle. I got to get castled here. This is step one. Um, I mean, he has knight d5, I have knight c4. I mean, all this is just very weird. Oh, his whole game is just, yeah. I bet the commentators, as they're watching this on the main stream, are just like, what is this opening? Because we're, we're both playing, we're both having probably a little bit too much fun with this, with the way we've done this so far. But I think I'm actually maybe slightly better because he does have a slight weakness on a5. That's the one thing. He does have this slight weakness in an end game because of this, this structure here. I mean, it's a matter of which pawn is weaker. So if we trade, yeah, he takes. Now, do I take with a bishop or not? Because both these two pawns are a little bit soft here. Now, taking with the pawn is actually, I think, the correct move. I mean, I don't like it because I create an isolated pawn, but I actually think it's correct. I mean, is it, though? He gets knight e5 and queen b6. Now, actually, probably, I should be a little bit sounder. Yeah, I, should be, I just should just try to be a little bit safer here. It's not... Not really right to go too crazy. Uh, now I have queen e2 and e4 maybe. I mean I have knight b3 at some point. I also have rook c1. If I can never get c4 and launch. Like maybe it's, uh, maybe c4 was a good move there. Maybe I should have played c4. I don't know. But I have e4 as a big threat. Um, it goes knight c5. Now again I do have c4 here to sort of get rid of the weakness potential. I also have rook d1. I also have knight b3. Do I go this knight to b3 or this knight to b3? Also very tough. I think I'm going to go here. This is a very, very strange position. Still probably equal, of course, because computer says every position is equal, but I do feel like I should have some chances. Like not knight c4, maybe knight b3. Maybe I do actually just go c4 here just to simplify the position and take the loss out of the equation but it's not really what i want to play so how do i do this knight b3 makes much more sense objectively because i can take oh but he's got e5 or something no then i have knight f5 so no this should be okay again very weird but whatever i can also just take with a knight too i just realized if i want to but that's gonna that's gonna peter out into a draw for sure but let me think for a second so i go there Eh, I don't think that was such a great move by me. I don't think that was the best move. But time remains balanced here. Time, time remains very balanced. Oh. Not in love with what I've done in this game, I have to say. Yay! Bowler CSGO just took five dollars out of Bezos's pocket. Thanks. He goes there, so he didn't actually do what I expect him to. I thought I could go F3 here, though. Here takes rooks. Uh, does knight d6? Okay, interesting. Now I have e4. E wait a second. Wait, 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 wait a second. Wait a second. E4? Queen e5? Whoa, whoa. Okay, but I mean, I gotta do it. So I have e5, and I have rook d2 at the end, I think, to save it, right? Because queen c4, e5, takes, takes. Rook e2, takes, takes, rook d. What? Wait a second. Wait, wait a second. What am I missing? E takes F6, Rook B. Oh, he's got Rook D, Rook C2 right away. Ah, maybe this was a mistake then. I should have used more time to be fair as well. I should have definitely used more time on this move. It's a very committal move playing E4 there. I go Rook D2. Wait, so E5 takes, takes Rook C2, Rook D2. Rook B2, Rook B2. Knight C4, EF6 is fine. Knight d5, I go f4. e5, he moves the knight, I just take the knight. 
Ah, no, but e5, knight e5. Oh, he can move his knight, actually. Again, yeah, this is just very poor. Very, very poor by me to not, not, not think before I just played this move. Very, very poor. So now I have to actually figure out how I'm doing this. Maybe I go queen e3. Queen f2, e5. No, I've actually misplayed this quite severely, I think. Maybe queen d3 is a move with f4. No, why did I do this? I should have used much more time on this. Ugh. I just thought I just thought I was just winning some for some reason. I go rook d3, knight d7, f4. Yeah, this is not what I wanted at all. Oh wait, rook d3 also gives him e5, which Wait, then I have knight b5, maybe? I guess I'll go here. I feel like I'm about to blunder something very seriously. This is not good. It's not good at all. No, I'm playing this very poorly. Yeah, it goes there. I have to go here. Yeah, I really feel like I'm about to blunder something serious. But maybe, maybe it'll be okay. Hope it's okay. Because knight c5, I have some knight d2 tricks. I, I also have e5. If he goes e5, he does it. Wait, so if I go... Hopefully this isn't a blunder. So I can take with a pawn, I think. And then I can take, and everything's kind of guarded. We'll see. Hmm. Feels like I should be okay after knight d3. I mean, I guess theoretically you can also move the knight to b7 or something. Then you have knight f5? No, not quite. Hmm. I guess I pre move it. It's a safe pre move. The sort of what I was banking on when we got into this position is that I have e5. What a what a mess of a of a world we are Jeez. living in here. But I still like on Draken's position that c2 pawn. When the smoke clears, right? When 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 all the all the the fire and gun smoke is gone here, that c2 pawn is weak at the end of all these lines. Yeah, but by the time the smoke clears, Black might have one minute on his clock. Oh, and I didn't by even the see way, that. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to point out that taking the rook here would have been maybe not bad but uh, this looks bad because you also lose the other knight and maybe black can move his queen and get pressure on the d4 knight but in any case on draken moving his knight back that's more understandable yep. queen trade is on deck as well which will make it easier for black to play so really the only question here is whether i play like rook d2 rook e2 or whether i go like rook e3 and knight e i guess i go i think i just go here and probably yeah it should be a draw do i take with a knight or not it's not what I want to do, but I think I have to. And probably this, this is going to probably peter out into a draw now. It was e6, which I'm a little surprised by. Because now I think I actually try to play. Because I have c3, I've got knight b5. And I guess I just go c3. Yeah, I, I can't really win this, I don't think. But the goal is basically what I'm going to do here. It's very simple. Step one is that I take the um, I take the risk of the loss out of the equation. Then step two is I try to play on if the opportunity presents itself. It was rook d5, logical move. Again, I can take if I want. I think, well, I also, no, c4 is not what I want to play. I think I'll just go like g4 maybe. I am maybe still a little bit worse here. Yeah, I am a little bit worse. I thought, I thought it already equalized after c3, but kind of did not actually equalize. Maybe I did, maybe it's just equal anyway, but okay, now he goes knight a6. I just go knight b3 here. Because now he goes back, I go knight d4, and it's gonna be a draw. And he moves the other knight, I think I can take. I can also go c4 at some moment as well to hit the rook. He does it. Okay, so wait, so if I take there and go c4. 
Uh, then he has knight c5 anyway. Oh, but I have knight c4 maybe to guard. Rook c8, rook c1. Eight, knight b6. Knight b... Yes, I think this... Ooh, bishop c5. No, I think this is okay. It's knight c4. Because rook c8, I have knight b6. And then I have knight c8. I also have rook d1 as well, I guess. Yeah, but what's the knockout for Black? He 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 calls on Draken's bluff. What's the move? Is it Bishop C five for? Oh, just Rook C eight. Just hit no, the but Knight B six. But Knight B six is a fork. Wait, what? Oh my God! Apparently, Rook C eight, Knight B six. Now you sack on C eight. You sack on C eight, and then you go Knight C four, hitting the Rook and then right. E three. And the pawn oh is unstoppable. B two and Knight D two. If he finds this, I swear. If he finds this. Shut the front door, Stockfish. Nobody even likes you anymore, Stockfish. No, he, nobody likes you, and he didn't go for it. But he went for something very At similar. He, he got his pawn to B3. Chances. And now Hikaru is establishing a stronghold on B6, and here comes Hikaru again. I mean, this is what he does. Yep. I think Hikaru is going to win this game. It's, I, I agree with you, and it's so amazing because I think, obviously, there was a tactical opportunity for Andraken, but how hard was it to find that? Nearly impossible for a human in, in, in this time control. And... And Hikaru just has a sixth sense for that stuff, right, Danya? You know how Bruce Willis saw dead people? Or wait, was that Haley Joel? Hikaru's sixth sense is recognizing the those critical moments, right? Where he makes a move that, yeah, I guess, you know, he should have he should have been punished, but I think he has a very good intuition for when for when it's time to take those types of risks. I just need to come up with a good move here. Knight C1, Knight B2. Doesn't really make sense. Knight D4 is a move. Knight B6 is probably the, one of the cleaner ways to draw. I also go f5 if I want. The time is a little bit tight now, so I need to find a move. Um, knight g3, knight c5. Maybe just... Actually, let's go here. Okay, let's go here. Because now his knights are also very boxed. Now I have knight c6. Yeah, I mean... Wait, knight b6 maybe? Or knight d6, wait. Or knight b5. Go here. Go here. Running the fork c4 yeah i mean he just he just tried way too hard to win this game when it wasn't there for no reason at all just wait i mean now i just go here and the rook's trapped i mean he just tried i mean he completely went insane all he he could have made the draw many times and instead he decided he needed to win and now he's going to lose the game for for basically no reason at all other than he lost his mind okay so what take i mean take i mean just down like 20 pieces here Yeah, just no no reason at all. There's no reason whatsoever to do this. I mean, rook b3 wins. I mean, everything wins, but I'm just going to go here. You can go b2, I guess, but I have rook f7. Just take, I guess, and go rook f2. Oh, I also have g5. I mean... Everything wins here. Let, let's just play the clean one, rook f2. He's going to try to play on. I mean, it's just lost, of course. I mean, the minute on the clock, there's just no way. Here. Also a little bit disrespectful not to resign, I have to say, at this point. Because, I mean, he just has no chance. Okay. So here in G5. I give him a temporary glimpse of a, a stalemate, but it's it's not here. Yeah, he goes there. Let's go check and take. Check. Yeah, I mean, he, he should just resign. It's a little bit. Okay, I just go here. Okay, we got the win. That is the fourth round, and that means we will have a break. Um, so we do get the win, and we are on three and a half now out of four points. I think we should be good to go. Let me minimize all. Oh, that was really fast. Okay, plays e4. Go here. Ah, so Lev wants to play this time. Okay, let me minimize. Okay, there we go. 
Okay, so I mean, there are a couple options. I can play Knight F6 here. I can also go C6. Which one do I want to play? I think I'm going to play this one. Play this one. Knight C6 is also fine, too. I mean, it's all it's all kind of playable. If I want to go D5, I kind of do. Go check. I mean, takes A5. I mean, this is all pretty normal. Yeah, you trade. Knight D2, of course. Oh, he plays Queen D2. Okay, so Lev, Lev has another little idea here. Another little wrinkle in, 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 the, in the time warp, or whatever you want to call it. So... I mean, takes a knight d7 is probably completely fine. But do I really want to play that? Do I really want to play that? Yeah, I kind of do. I'm going to take, I castle, play rook e8. I mean, all very normal. Not a super exciting line here. I will say that. I mean, I guess white can also just take e4 and then queen e7, and again, headed for a very drawish position. Okay, so he takes on e5, so I'm gonna castle here. I have d4, I'm gonna go knight bd7, okay. Oh wait, did I just blunder? Wait a second, I actually, oh, wait a second, whoops, wait, I wasn't paying attention there for a second. Wait, okay, let's go here. Wait a second, what was that? <laughs> what the fridge was that? Yikes. Although wait, Queen F4 actually allows Knight H5. So maybe it's maybe it's completely okay the more I look at this. Actually, no, I think I'm completely fine here. I mean, what is left supposed to play? Okay, queen g5. And of h6, what is he? He has some knight g6 trick or something? Wait a second, wait a second. I also have queen b4 check. Wait, I also have queen b4 and knight takes e4, but knight d7 looks right. <laughs> so if I go knight d7, he goes f4. I take, take, queen b4. I mean, that looks... Completely fine, unless I'm insane. This takes... I mean... Yeah, this doesn't look very attractive for love at all. My water. F495, I mean, because F495 takes six. I have the classic right triangle, of course, as always. 90 degrees and um and i think i'm just doing maybe i'm even better here possibly possibly i think that's up in the air but i could just be better yeah this right triangle is devastating it's like the right triangle it's also the alien spacecraft as well because actually this looks like math isn't this just like this when you this is like the, the 90 and 90 the 180 okay whatever let's and then there's the rate is there yeah, okay, whatever. The stupid math. Anyway, but yes, I have the 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 I, this is this you see this in math class. I just don't remember what you call. You call it like the pyramid with like the whatever. Anyway, let's focus on the chess. Like it feels like this is where you start measuring, you measure the angle and blah 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 and all that stuff that I studied 500,000 years ago that it is really not relevant in everyday life in any way shape or form, but for some reason you have to study it in school anyway. So, okay, so I guess I'll just take. Uh, I mean, I, I think I can play h6. I mean, this looks ridiculous for, for white, although maybe it's completely fine. I feel like it's not fine, though. I really don't think this is fine for white. But maybe maybe it's just maybe it just is. I don't even know. Let's go h6, attack the queen. Create, create Lufthansa for the king as well. Yeah, so he goes knight c3. So really, the only issue for me here... The issue for me is that I don't have um, I don't have this development. My rook's on e8, I just win the game. Like the knight on d7 looks a little bit wrong. So what I need to do here is I need to activate the bishop. Yeah, I think the way to activate is I'm gonna go here on bishop a6. This looks pretty reasonable here. I don't actually know if I'm gonna win this game. 
but I should not lose this game. There should be zero chance that I lose here. And it goes there, I go here. Idea Bishop A6 to activate on the diagonal. And then I go rookie eight, and I mean I it can't be worse. The, the, really the only question here is can I can I um can I be better? Can I win this? Can I put pressure or potentially win this game? So if I win this game, I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna I mean I think there's like 90% chance that I qualify. So there there is upside here if I can win this game. He goes h4. I kind of expect that. I guess I'll go here. Target the knight. We could have played a5, a4 first, maybe, but who cares? Not me. King g1, so I can trade and go knight c5. I mean, again, this looks very unpleasant for... Wait, do I really want to tr trade? I think, you know what? I just take the safe route here. This might not be the best route, but I'm just going to reduce the risk. I'm going to take all the risk out of the game where I can't lose, and Lev has to defend a slightly worse position with less time on the clock. So this makes a lot of sense. Maybe even... Ah, maybe c5, c4... Oh, wait, was c5 maybe just winning here? No, c5 is bishop a4. Never mind, I'm, I'm smoking something. Okay, so he takes with the queen as expected. I'll trade, I'll go here, hit the bishop, weak pawn. I mean, again, he has rook h3, obviously, like with 96, 94. Um, and maybe he can save this. Maybe he can save this game, but I can't lose. So because I can't lose, I'm very, I'm just generally very happy with what's going on here. Question is, do I have time for knight h5 or do I have to go rook d4? I mean, rook d7 or rook d6. I guess I'll go here. Because d4, I have knight e6 and rook d4. And then rook d8 next move. And I mean, I should just be better. Clearly better with the isolated pawn on d3. I mean, I can even block the pawn with knight e6. I mean, he might try to sack a pawn with d4 and bishop f5. But again, he's down a lot of time on the clock already. He's already down over a minute and a half. So I just, I'm just happy because now I play for the squeeze because I, I try to squeeze him on the board because it's a tough position to play and I try to squeeze him on the clock. So I, I, try to, I try to squeeze him on both and just make his life very unpleasant here. We'll see what he does. I mean, he does have d4, I guess, with knight e2, but it just looks wrong somehow. It doesn't look right at all. He's down to five minutes. Yeah, this just doesn't feel very pleasant for white at all. Dude, what is love going to do here? Okay, so chess warrior draw is a quick game. Fabiano's still playing. So I might have to play Noterbeck next round, actually, which is also going to be an interesting pairing because I did lose him in title Tuesday, so I haven't forgotten that game. But first things first, I have to win this game. I mean, that's that's first things first. I stack the two towers and let's see what I mean this just looks so unpleasant I have 96 knight d4 I can probably even reroute the other knight it's just as long as I don't let him trade the knights I think I have very good winning chance if he's able to trade a set of knights I'm better but I'm not sure I'll be able to win on the board I'll probably be able I'll probably be able to just because I'll be squeezing him on the clock anyway but he goes 92 so I have 96 here or a knight d5. Maybe I should have put the rook on d6 to avoid this bishop f5 thingy that he has here. Maybe the rook on d7 is actually wrong. Huh, maybe. But, okay, whatever. Let's just go here. I'll probably go bishop d3, knight d4, trade. And then... I mean, I also can just go knight d5. It's going to be very hard to save this for white. Especially since he's down nearly three minutes on the clock to boot. Like, this is another example, I think, if this was classical chess. White probably is about, like, I would say, I'd say 60% chance to draw. But in a blitz game, down three minutes, no increment. I think the chance of left saving this are very low. Probably, like, 20, 20%. But I still, I, the thing is, I still have to find some good moves. And that's really the point. And I do have knight d4 here. But again, the point is, he has a couple of weaknesses. So I don't really want to trade pieces off here. I think I'm going to go here. I give him d4 if he wants, because I can go knight c7. I can also go knight before as well. It's just, it's not a fun position to play for white at all. I have knight before. Although I did, although wait, maybe this was a mistake by me. I guess I'll go, yeah, I think I actually just butchered this a little bit. I did butcher this. I'm still much better. It's not as, not as, 
easy. And it's not as easy to play as I thought it should be, but I'm still up three minutes. So again, I mean, it's, it's very hard to play here for white. I also have knight b5 to win the pawn. Yeah, I mean, the problem is here, there's just, there's no increment. That's Lev's biggest problem. Because he's one blunder away from losing the game. And he's also basically in a situation where if he doesn't play quickly, he's also just going to lose on time. So it's just very, very unpleasant. All the factors work, uh, work in Black's favor here. I mean, it's just, it's just too hard to play. I mean, this is 10-0, like... Aye, aye, aye. I mean, Bishop F5, I think, is the best way for him to play because at least he trades off a piece. So if he can reach some kind of drawish endgame, he has a chance to save it. I mean, at least reach some technically drawn endgame and maybe just have like 20, 20 pre, uh, pre moves. But oh, time is just a big problem here. I mean, he's down four minutes, down to two minutes on the clock in a very unpleasant position. Two minutes approaching. Okay, he goes rook c1. So his idea is bishop f5, I guess. Okay, so if I take, he has bishop b3. So he comes up with actually a pretty good idea here. And if I go knight b5, bishop d7, knight f3. Okay, he can maybe draw that. That's actually a pretty, pretty good move, I think, by Lev. He might have found the only move that doesn't lose on the spot. But the problem is he spent so much time on that move that it's, it realistically should not make a difference if I play a couple of good moves. Knight b5, bishop b3 is, is, is very nice by Lev. Very, very nice find by him to see bishop b3. Or wait, no, bishop b3 doesn't... No, sorry, bishop f5. That's the move. Um... Ninety two, King H two, even that's not actually all that great. And it goes there, and I take, and I take, and I check, and I take. I mean, it's still down a pawn here. That's the problem. I mean, he can't go to F one because he gets mated. He takes, and then I, I mean, he has to take C six, and then I. I mean, I have rook d4 first or knight a3. My instinct is that knight, knight a2 must be right. And he's, he's so low on time here that, I mean. Knight b4, rook d4, I mean, I just don't see how black is ever, or, or white is ever saving this game. Even though in a classical game, I think there's some chance that white could still save this. Yeah, like he finds bishop a4, which is a good move. Um. Maybe the only move, actually, that doesn't lose on the spot. Yeah, I'm not actually thrilled by the way I've played this. But again, he's got no time. If, if he had more time, he'd have some chances. Do I have rook d3 here? No, I don't. I guess I have to go here. It goes eight there. Uh, logical move. I can play knight c6 if I want. Then he has bishop a4. Mm, he's trying to... He's actually finding a way to make this kind of interesting. I think I'm going to go here, though. Or no, maybe I just move my king, then rook c3. King e7. Yeah, I think I just moved the king. No, no reason to be cheeky. It was g4. Guess I'll go here, because I have knight e5, knight d4. I don't like g4 by Levon. I go here, attack the rook. I did give him rook c3, but... Oh, do I have rook d4? Rook d4 is probably a technical win here. But see, the problem is, do I want to do that? He's got a minute on the clock. Like, I think rook d4 is a technical win. But with only a minute on the clock, I shouldn't shouldn't go for the technical win. I should try to just beat him on, on, on the board. It goes b4. Now, this allows knight d3 for starters. I mean, I can also just go f6 or king e7. Again, now rook d4 I know is winning. But do I want to win with that? Yeah, I, I kind of should be... I should take the safe route. Yeah, I should just take the safe route. The, the, the way that I now I know this is winning because the pawn's on b4. With the pawn on b2, it's not easy, but now I have b5, a6, knight, c6, and just win the pawn. If this is on b2, it's hard, but now I have b5, knight, c6 to win the pawn, which is why I did rook d4 um, on the second go of it. In 45 seconds, I just mean almost no chance for love to survive. So here, knight, c6. 
here. Yeah, he goes there. I mean, he, he's trying. I mean, I give him credit, but again, it's... Okay, but let's see. I, I I know that I'm gonna win this game on time, almost no matter what I do here. So, go here, go here. I'm gonna go knight c3. I mean, 30 seconds is not, it's just not really possible for him to survive this. Unless I blunder, which is always possible, of course. If I go b4 here, he's got 30 seconds. I mean, there's just no chance for him to survive. Yeah, okay, I think this is game. He's he's gonna resign here. Yeah, or or he's gonna just let his time run out, one or the other. Yeah. All right, we got another win. Good win, actually. Pretty pretty pleased with that one. I, I have to say I'm pretty pleased with that with that one. That one I'm 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 very happy. I, I have to be honest. Thank you to watchful Shubo for the eleven is atomic, then you detox, Godfather. Um, pretty happy with that one. I thought, I mean, let me see. For a second, I thought I blundered in the opening, but it's actually maybe not a blunder. Knight of... Oh, Lev played the wrong order. He was actually supposed to go here and then takes, because now if I go queen e7, he, not f3, sorry, he takes first, and then he can create this chain of four, and he has he has two, two juicers and a rook for the bishop and the knight. Yes, this is what he's supposed to do. So d4 was wrong, because then after queen e7... Wait, queen f4? Why is this good? Knight h5? Huh? Oh, good lord. Queen G oh my god. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. That's ridiculous. Because now if I take the queen, he is checking. <laughs> that is absurd. Oh my god. Computers are so ridiculous. That is just ridiculous. <laughs> that is just. I, I have no words for that. I mean, no. He, I mean, a human finds that they sh in, in a blitz game, they're definitely cheating. That is just ridiculous. Okay, let's go e4. Hmm. Jeffrey wants to play. Interesting. Let's minimize everything. Let's go check. Hmm. Play d4. Mix it up a little bit. This is normally what I play. Mmm, this is nice. Nice croissant with uh, some peanut butter and jelly. See if I'm bad here or not. Maybe not best, but I'm play it anyway. Mmm. Oh, did I blunder? Wait, no, I'm knight c3 and bishop e3, right? There's still, there's still some kind of weird theory, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. It's peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. The way you make them. Well, let's see what uh, Jeffrey's going to do here. I don't know if this is actually good. I'm just playing it. Draw or win, I'm pretty much almost I'm almost guaranteed to make the top eight if I draw or win this game. I'm a little surprised Jeffrey played C5 and not E5. Because I, I think if he had played E5, I would have just played the Berlin draw. So I'm a little bit surprised that Jeffrey didn't do that, I have to say. Jeffrey using a lot of time here. Okay, plays d5. Interesting move, I guess. What's the idea here? If I take... I don't understand. Isn't this just a free pawn? It wants to take and go bishop f5, I guess, but this doesn't look quite right to me. Optically. This doesn't look right, somehow. 
Knight d5, queen d4, queen a5. Hmm. I mean, maybe, maybe it's probably just a draw, I guess. After queen e3. What's his idea, though? Okay, if I go queen e3, if he takes, I just take. If those bishops be there, I actually have knight d4. I think he might just go queen d3, and because he's the bishops and can go knight d5, this might peter out. But I am up a pawn, and as they say in Russia, pawn is pawn. Just like, you know, special operation is special operation. Anyway. Let's see what the next move is going to be here. Yeah, he plays queen d3, which is what I expected, kind of. I do have knight d4 here, maybe. Um... Let's see, what do I want to do? I think I wait, knight d4 he castles. Wait a second, I have to be a little bit careful. Um Yeah, I have to be a touch careful. It's not as simple as I thought it was on first glance. Maybe knight h4 is a move. Hmm. But knight h4 he still just castles. I mean I can play knight c3 and like I mean, I, I feel like I should be completely fine here, but finding the right line is not trivial, I have to say. Bishop off 495. Are you surprised sometimes? I know this is a random sort of macro question, but are you mm -hmm. just surprised sometimes by how rich the opening stage still is in chess? I mean, we're talking the highest levels of chess where you you watch and play more chess than maybe any other human being on the planet, right? It's what you do. And how often after 10 moves are you still evaluating something that's unique and original and rich? You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's fascinating to me that like- It's supernatural. We've never seen this position before. It's super, it, it, it's honestly, it defies logic. Right. And it defies physics because you think, imagine like how many Grandmaster games are played constantly on a daily basis, online, over the board, everywhere, the RCC. And not just move 10, Danny, I would even argue that this, d4 and queen takes d4 line is already incredibly uncommon and what levon yep. played earlier takes an e5 even in this position yep. it's yep. it's nuts how many options there are and and obviously we know the math you know it checks out right chess has you know right to the to the 10th power right 1.4 billion possible positions just from the beginning so we know but it's just fascinating when you think about it and it, it makes me just sorry i'm just having a moment of feeling grateful no, how it's... awesome it is to cover top level chess and be like oh my god this is like Obviously, so there's structural things we're familiar with. The isolated queen side pawns. You understand what white wants to do to convert on a technical level. We've seen those ideas before, but still for a guy like Jeffrey Zhang, one of the best players in the world to be out maneuvered and out thought in the, it, before the first 10 moves, it's just fascinating. So anyway, chess is awesome. Can't disagree with that. And I would even say that there's been a shift recently in uh, the approach to the opening players. You know, they, they've, they're a little bit past the Berlin phase yeah you know there's still berlins and you know you still have those theoretical battles but now i think increasingly everyone's looking for you know new creative cutting edge lines as early as possible as early as move four or five in in conventional openings yeah which is great maybe i should play bishop e3 there i don't know there's a move i mean i'm definitely better here it's just a question of how do i prove this really I mean, I can go knight c2 and then f3 or something. Hmm. Out of focus a little bit, though, not find some magic way to throw this game away. And we come back to that bishop here, right? Evaluation. I mean, look at it. The light square bishop is a super huge thorn in white side on d3. Yeah, but I think Hikaru actually made a small but significant error. He went king oh, d1 kind of here? automatically. Oh, yes. wow. Bishop and e3. This makes all the difference because this gives the king the d2 square and if you take twice then you get forked by the by the king it's funny while i was continuing my rant about the last group i didn't know why you had gone back to this position and then i started thinking like yeah like, what's so bishop special e3? about this yeah wow. there was bishop e3 and then king d2 and then white connects the rooks now you're absolutely right okay the position has changed again i'm gonna go like bishop g7 and maybe i go like knight f3 knight d2 i feel like this makes sense just to take away squares but again, I don't feel like I've played this super well.
Not overly enthused by this, I have to say. He goes to e7. Uh, he wants bishop d8, which actually makes a lot of sense. I, I mean, I'm not happy with my plan this game. But I mean, a draw is actually completely fine here for me. So I, th I think what I need to do here is just make sure that I don't lose. And if it's a draw, it's a draw. But I mean, a draw, even if I if I win this game, that's great. But a draw is still a great result here. I mean, it's it, all, all I need to do is get top eight. So even though I play a couple inaccurate moves, but I can just like kill the game, that's more important than taking the risk of the win versus the loss. So if I lose this game, I still should qualify, but it's a little bit messy. It's still messy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he just wants to take, but you know what? I don't even care. I'm just going to go rookie one. I literally don't care. A draw is completely fine. I mean, I know I messed it up without going bishop e3, b4, and castles, and I probably would have won if I had done that, but who cares? Who careth at all? Ah. <sighs> I also wonder if 97 was a move, but again, in this situation, I'm just not taking any risk. Now, do I trade? No, I think I just take. He takes. I can take with the king here, actually. And then bring the rook in. Bada bing, bada boom. I think I just take with the take with the king and just run my king out. Okay, Jeffrey's moving instantly. I, I mean, maybe Jeffrey doesn't realize that I'm actually, I, I don't care on a draw. It's just like, a draw is fine for me. Like, I, I just am not worried at all although i can go rookie one and try to play for more aha uh -huh. i can play rookie one and try to go for more do i want to try to go for more or not or do i just go a3 and then rookie one a3 takes rookie one rookie six ninety two hmm what do i want to do here hmm i can also go a4 a5 rookie one rookie six d4 Do I want to put the pawn on a5 or not is the question. I'm trying to think whether I want to go a4 here. There, 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 there. I mean, it's a pawn. No, but I mean, this has to be good. So let's just go a4. Yes, to take and I go a5. I think I go here and then rookie one. He can't go here because then I go g4 and he gets checkmated in the center of the board. Just, just to go back. And then I go rookie one. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? I'm an idiot. He just moves the king. I'm just an idiot. I'm just an actual idiot. I'm just an idiot. I miss king d7. I'm just a true idiot. I'm just an American idiot. What a bad move. <laughs> I put the pawn on a3 and go rookie one. I can actually play for the win. Now I just make okay. That's very poor by me. Take yeah, extremely poor. Let's go G four. Just kill the game. Uh, very disgustingly bad by me. No bueno. No es tan bueno. Um, goes knight h four. Now the thing is, I can actually try to play on. I think I'm gonna play. I'm gonna try to play on now. Don't even ask me why, but I am. Uh, let's go here. King c two. King f two. Actually, there's no reason not to play on because I can't lose. And I'm up 40 seconds on the clock and he has pawns on the square of my bishop. So there's really no good reason not to try and play on. The question is, how do I do this? I guess I'll go here. I can check and go knight h5. I can also check again. Go here, bring the king in. This knight, actually, yeah, I missed knight f4 completely. And now, yeah, now it's just an easy draw for him. Yeah, this was not not very well executed at all by me. Yeah, not executed well at all. But it's a draw. That's life. Go here. 
Wait, 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 wait a second, Jeffrey. Wait a second. He just got a little bit careless here for no particularly good reason. And now he might have to defend this position. Scott, I mean, I don't know why did why on earth did Jeffrey just do that? Yeah, now it's game on again. Absolutely, absolutely careless by Jeffrey. No, no literally no good reason for doing that. And now it's game on again. Unbelievable. Yeah, now I can go F4 or H4. It's a question of which pawn do I want to push. My instinct is that I should play H4. And maybe F4 and F5. Yeah, Jeffrey got way too careless for no reason at all. Now he can't take because he loses the knight. I mean, this is kind of scary for black a little bit. H6, I'm probably going H5. To f okay, it goes 96. Now I can go H5 here. If I trade, I think it's a draw. If I take on... Maybe h4, maybe I should have gone bishop c3 first. But wait, if I take and wait a second, wait a second. h5, oh, knight a6. Or do I just take, oh, wait a second. If I take and he takes on h4, can I actually win that f4, bishop b3? If I take, really don't want to. Maybe I go, wait, h5, bishop c2, knight a6, bishop c3, c3. No, that can't be right. If I take, that's a draw. Knight e6 is 100% a draw. If I take g4, is that a, I think that's still a draw. I think I have to do this. And I have to take. Wait, was that a slip? Wait, did Jeffrey just make a mouse? Oh my gosh, Jeffrey just made a mouse slip. Oh my gosh, Jeffrey just made a mouse slip. I think, or not, I actually have no idea. Maybe it wasn't a mouse slip. But this looks wrong, this looks completely wrong. Um, maybe, I, was it a mouse slip? Okay, but is this actually a draw? Because. I'm not sure this is a draw the more I look at this end game. Because I have wide peepos and I have three, not two. If I only had two, it's the wrong color, it's the wrong color square. But with three, I'm really unsure about this. If I go a6. I go here. Yeah, what? what is... I mean, it's just the wide peepos. It was? Oh, he admitted it on stream. It was a total slip. Okay. They didn't have me up. They assumed it would be a draw. <laughs> okay, they assumed it would be a draw. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Uh, but I assume, I assume it was a slip. That's, that's all I can conclude. Okay, so here we go. So it looks like those are the final standings. Um... Yeah, so let, let's make sure. So it looks like based on final standings, yeah. So I'm going to play Jeffrey. Uh, so I, I do end up in clear first with seven out of nine. Andreken is in second. Fabian on third. Grishuk fourth. Vidit, I think first time he's actually qualified for the knockout. Uh, Jose Jospin, Jospin, Jose Martinez, Alcantara in sixth. Levon in seventh. Jeffrey in eighth. So that means that I will play Jeffrey tomorrow. One plays eight. Andreken will play Levon. Fabiano will play against Jose. Nice pairing for Fabiano. And Sasha will play against Vidi and... Those are the um, th those are those are going to be the brackets tomorrow. Now, what I want to say is, poor Wesley again. It's been really tough for him when we look at when we look at this um, when we look at this his standings. It just hasn't really worked out. Wesley has played. He's got twenty two points, but seven events, uh, five knockouts, but only eight thousand dollars because he's lost in the first round in a lot of these times. Whereas you see players who, who for example, have um, like Levon, for example, six times, only three knockouts, but he's won. I think he finished semis or I think he finished finals and won one. So it's just been tough for Wesley. And now he misses out again um, on another another weekend opportunity here.